After an incredibly tense pair of matches, these two teams are tied one and one because, according to data, they are exactly perfectly evenly matched. Let's see if Microsoft or National Instruments can provide us with more statistics to describe one as a little bit better. Going into match number three of week three of the After Hours Gaming League. Get all your AHGL news at AfterHoursGaming.tv. And of course, give a huge shout out to Red Bull Gaming for helping make the AHGL occur. Down in the bottom left hand corner, representing the champions of After Hours Gaming League Season 1, it's Microsoft's top deck. And in the top right corner, from National Instruments, it's Banjo Island, a mythical place where incredible things happen with five to six strings depending on where you're from. The map's gonna be frost, there's a lot of space. The warmth of Banjo Island fueling the player, Banjo Island in the top right. He's gonna hear all sorts of fantastic, cheery, ragtimey tunes. Uh, <laughs> whoops, wrong, wrong music genre. Listen, I cast StarCraft, okay? Already we're seeing something interesting happen here by the man with the big swinging deck, top deck himself, going for a gateway in main base, a rather unusual decision on a map this large. We generally see a nexus first, but it's also not infrequent to see the gateway first. There are some corners that can be cut with that gateway first as well. Uh, sometimes you'll see players use this as a tool to cut the forge and still get a quite early expand as well. Zerg player Banjo Island. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Jahow86, one of the day knights in chat, says, oh, I hear banjos. Paddle faster. So good. So good. Will the banjos lead us to paradise? I don't know. I set sail on the high seas, listen astutely, and let the strum of the noble banjo guide me. Top deck's gonna go with a with a two and two. A little bit of this, a little bit of that is his little bit of strat. Oh my god, National Instruments Banjo Island has spent so much time relaxing that he, with a tan, takes three hatcheries before spawning pool. Unbelievable. He likely has a martini with a little umbrella hanging out of it as he gets his spawning pool at the 3 minute and 30 second mark. An incredibly late play, but a fantastic one given what top deck is doing. Building the zealot, it's likely going to be a zealot cancel, and it is! He's going for the nexus. <gasps> top deck can apply no pressure. Oh my god, top deck is going to have to hope that his gateway accidentally top decks death wing so that he can remove all those zerg threats from the battlefield and lose all his probes. That sounds like a weird ability. Top deck getting out is mothership core, mama ship core always going to be used for the good old defense but Banjo Island with this. <gasps> Ooh, three hatch pool with early gas. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Absolutely love it. He's going to get zergling speed, he's going to control the skies, he's going to pretend to be a man who's calm, pretend to be a guy that likes to tech up, but with those speed zerglings he can both apply pressure, remove dastardly forward pylons, and he can bring the noise. Forge goes down, top deck Stargate also en route, is popping down at approximately the same time that it would normally go down were it a, uh, a Nexus first build, so I like it. Top deck doing a little bit of scouting. Banjo Island doing a little bit of macroing. All's good in the hood. No drones and gas speed coming down the pipeline. These players, in the words of Sundance to Giovanni, they get it. They get it. Top deck has a forge. He has a stargate. He's getting an oracle. Ooh. Now, forge is not good here unless you use it for an upgrade. Even the cannon doesn't justify the existence of that forge. If you wanted to go for a nexus first, you would have gotten the forge and the stargate at the same time and had more probes. So you really have to justify this forge right now. You have to prove it. It's like if you tell your parents you want to stop studying on the weekends and go do something that feels awesome to you, you gotta justify it. You gotta provide evidence to your parents. No, mom. 
It is really good to spend time at the mall. Look, I'll do the laundry. Well, okay. Bribing parents works. Gas geysers for Banjo Island coming up. Ooh, look at that. Absolutely fantastic timing. On the single... Ooh, double spore. Triple spore. He knows exactly where his opponent's gonna move in. Oh my god, and it's gonna pop! It's gonna pop! And there it is. He's taking down one, two, three. Will he get out in time? He will. But that's not enough damage. Il n'y a pas de damage. We also see a robotics facility coming out very early. Phoenix is en route to apply damage. <gasps> very scary. Very scary. There's that early upgrade. I dig that. <laughs> if that were some buried treasure, I would seriously dig that move. Attempting to kill another drone. The Oracle succeeds. There's a plane outside. Ready to swoop in, land, unload, and enter my house, asking, what are these incredible tactics we're seeing at a Banjo Island? Well, don't worry, outdoorsy planes. Banjo Island's going for a very fast layer with an evolution chamber, and check this out. Absolutely no roach worn. Four geysers done. Count them, four. You, you can even lose your thumb and still count them, four. He has more than enough to be able to go for a... Uh, uh, what's the name of it? Aspire Focus Play. We're seeing Top Deck do one of my favorite openings in the world. He's going for a Stargate Fast Colossus 4 gate. This allows him to get up an extremely safe early expansion. Generally, it is done with a Nexus first. Absolutely still solid with a Gateway first. Everything getting scouted out. This one sneaky overlord. Yeah! Hiding in the back. Well, one Overlord's gonna fall, but look at this. If at first you don't succeed, double Hydra Den. <gasps> Range. Is the other Hydra Den gonna get speed? It is! Oh my god, it's a Hydra timing push. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh. Oh, guys, this play is posh. He's getting Hydras with speed and range. He's a strategist. He's deranged. It's going to be a single Colossus with its long legginess gently nestling in all those small gateway units like a mother hen, but isn't enough. We don't know yet. Some Phoenixes in position, but Hydras are soon going to be coming out in large numbers. Oh, muscular augments and groove spines. I don't mean to be forward, Hydralisks, but... Have you been augmenting your muscles lately? Oh, why, yes, I have, and I feel much more confident and aggressive. Plus one coming out. Wow, a 1-1 one, one speed range Hydra timing push. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. There is but a Colossus. Is it just one? Is it just one? It is just one. Oh my no spire. Oh my double backflip. No way. Here it comes. The army of Hydras. They've been revealed. There's 19 of them. The observer spots them. The Colossus is like, yeah, Tony, totally that's coming. I'm not really that worried about it. Manages to throw it down. Blue force fields aplenty. Wow, that actually that was actually very easy. Goodness. Wow. Top deck's pretty good. <laughs> Man, he made that look very simple. He has gateways now, I mean, he's getting blink. He's probably gonna get plus two in a sec. Wow, that was, uh, I mean, he did it. Well, like, uh, uh, Mutalisks! That's gonna be the follow-up play, and oh my god, Banjo Island. Get your Colossus out of there. He pulls back, he does, he loses the Mothership Core! I'm gonna pretend like it's a big deal, but I don't think it matters, because Banjo Island is really wounding these Hydras. God, your Phoenixes! Yeah. They're taking some sick damage. One Phoenix falls, two Phoenix falls, three Phoenix falls. And when you have no Phoenix, you're bound to have some serious frowns with that Spire being done now and no Phoenixes in the skies. I don't think there's going to be a very good series of news updates coming into Top Deck's Facebook news feed. Shelly Bryant posted the following on your wall. 
You're dead, man. There's no anti-air. Where'd your phoenixes go? <gasps> Eight people like this comment. It's the day nights in chat watching. Rooting for national instruments. Mutalisks en route. <laughs> that was a weird analogy. But there it is. Mutalisks en route. Banjo. Whoa! Going for a fifth base channeling. The powers of J-Dong. The spirit of J-Dong flowing through his fingers. Yuta's getting ready to counterattack. These stalkers are like, oh, Jesus, we have blank. Do we attack? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I just, I will go. No, we'll attack. I don't know if we should go home. I've got a pylon. The Lyote won't tell anyone. Those stalkers really need to begin to decide what they want to do. Top deck is in a very unfortunate position. And there it goes. Oh, oh, everything is gonna die. We have Lings and Hydras going for the third base. Top deck. Uh, he's falling apart. Banjo Island. Darting directly into the main base. Only a few Blink Stalkers to spare, but these Hydras taking down the cannon, getting Blunk up upon as well. He's trying to retreat, but what do you know, Joe? Not a lot of room, not a lot of good places to be at. Banjo Island. Oh, a Phoenix! He's gonna cut ya! He's a blade man, man. He's gonna dart under this way and that way. Will the Colossus fall? No. Ah! Banjo Island's Mutalisk switch. Might have to get... <laughs> oh! Oh my god. You know what? That There you go. That was awesome. I mean... First you don't succeed. Cannon rush at the 15 minute mark. That's what I'm talking about. Top deck successfully denies mining of minerals over at this fourth base, but Banjo Island has some counterattacks planned. This base doesn't have that much. Are there any more phoenixes coming out? <gasps> no! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In the words of marketing from the 1990s again, uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Top deck is in a rather precarious position. He's up against 24 mutalisks. He has a phoenix. He has more stalkers. This is going to be problematic. Top deck has taken out this base. It looks like this top left expansion doesn't really have that much mining in it. Doesn't even have drones getting produced. Banjo Island is ripping down probes left and right, up and down. Vertical, horizontal, with yaw to the left and yaw to the right. Banjo Island's front is falling. A base trade might very well be the scenario in which we reside. 34 probes to 50 drones. <gasps> Tumbling down. Banjo Island. Oh, sneaking a base. Natural expansion falls. Oh, that spire is sick. It's not getting enough vitamin C. And it will manage to stay alive in the corner. Nine mutalisks in production. More mutalisks keep getting produced. So important to keep that count down, but no, man, just to miss an opportunity. Wow, double expand to the corner's top deck. Is trying to push his luck as far as possible. Zergling's taking out the third expansion. Oh, a classic base race. Who will win? National Instruments, Banjo Island, or Microsoft's top deck? Both their names convey a sense of belonging in these awkward circumstances. <laughs> Vitamin creep. Nice, anti-citizen. Hydroden number two is going to fall. Confusion for top deck elevates a slight bit. 22 to 33 in a phoenix just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Nexus is going to finish in this top corner. Mutalus taking down buildings. Zerglings taking down buildings. Zealot, Stalker, Colossus going directly into Spine Crawlers. <laughs> With this base trade scenario of too many Stalkers fall, then the Mutalus are going to be able to win easily. Uh, these are two zero Stalkers, and they begin with one armor. It means they're quite effective against Mutalisks, as is with that Glaive Worm to plus one. Still doesn't affect the subsequent Glaive Bounces that will still deal three and ten damage. Base is a Fallen. Lincoln's a Nunder. Is Phoenix... Where is he? Oh, he, need, he needs to rejoin the army. Ah! Oh. Nexus has been found. Oh, Nexus has been found. Damn it, twice. Top deck is going to use a pair of it looks like. Oh, there's four. One of them's off duty. To ooh, man. Oh, dude. Ah. 
I mean, uh, oof. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, uh, is there a mothership core? No. Ah. Um, I mean, he knows about this base, so he's gonna go kill this base. Ooh, our pylon's up here. Ah. Oh, top deck. Oh, man. Ow. Oh, and then, mmm, the river. In the structure count, we have two pylons. Here's one. Uh, we have one pylon. Ah. Um, there, uh, so, uh, Mash Lushman's wins! He hasn't, he's been revealed, and that's it. And, uh, wow. A GG. And that's it. National Instruments manages to take a win, bringing the series to 2 1 in their favor after an intense base race. It's time for Microsoft to send out their captain, Bay, a regular from season one. One of their absolute best players. Will he be able to tie it up, bring it to the ace match, or will National Instruments get their revenge and win 3 1? Stay tuned. Because after this break, we are at match point in the After Hours Gaming League Week 3 action.